All you Spawn fans will love this episode of G1 Reviews because we are going to be reviewing the immortal Angela from Todd Toys. Angela is a Series 2 release from 1994 and comes in about 25 different variants that include different color skin, armor, different staff color variations, sword and sheath placements within the package, and yes, you are hearing me correctly, no panties on some of her earlier versions. Ooh la la! Unfortunately, this particular Angela is a version 5 with her panties painted on. What a drag, right? There will be no cheap frills in this review, just honest and factual information from a totally unbiased reviewer. This figure is one of those affordable additions you can add to your classic Spawn collection. She can be found just about anywhere for between $10 and $15 in the package, and a little less out of the package. So, speaking of packages, let's take a look at the one she comes in here. From Series 2, we got Angela from Todd Toys. Right up here reads, removable sword, fits in hand, staff, fire, spear. I really like the extra perks they're adding to the figures in the Series 2. You got some movable parts now, some things you can take off, move around. I really like that. Um, the fact that they did not put a comic book in Series 2 was the only downfall that I can think of uh, so far. I did like the comic book edition. So down here at the bottom you have Spawn and the logo reads Deluxe Edition Ultra Action Figures. And if you turn it around, you got the figures from Series 1 right there at the top. And then if you drop below that, you got the Series 2 figures with Angela making her debut. Bad Rock Chapel, Commando Spawn, and Malbolgia join her for this series. And Pilot Spawn can come along for the ride as well. We have some vehicles here from that era, from the Spawn Mobile to the Violator Monster Rig, Spawn Alley, and then new for Series 2, you have the Spawn Air Cycle and the Violator Chopper. Then on the bottom left of this package, you have Todd McFarlane, the man behind Spawn. Go ahead and pause that if you want to read that. So far, really liking it, thinking it's going to be awesome. Can't wait to see her up close and personal. So before we get started opening her, let's take a look at a quick origin on the Angelic Angela, shall we? Angela makes her debut in Spawn issue number 9 as an Asgardian bounty hunter from heaven on a mission to destroy the hell spawn that Malbolgia let loose on Earth. After a fierce battle and ultimately a loss, she returned to heaven where the angel Gabriel tries to frame her in light of her recent defeat by saying, she did not have permission to kill Spawn. Upon hearing of her accusation, Spawn visits Heaven, and during her trial for hunting him without a permit, Spawn testifies in her behalf that she had permission to kill him. The angels have none of Spawn's testimony and begin to attack him, forcing Angela to defend him. Spawn and Angela escape to a corner of Hell where they have a brief romance, but bickering over who is the greater warrior leads Angela to returning to Heaven to proclaim her plans to be a freelance angel. And we are back with Angela, unpackaged and unbridled. First, I'd like to point out that this figure was extremely hard to stand up, and I'm gonna show you why. Down here, you can see that one leg is definitely longer than the other one, which makes it extremely difficult to get her to stand up or to pose whatsoever. So that I did not like whatsoever on Angela. But let's go ahead and take a look at her sculpt and her paint apps, uh, along with her articulation all at once here. Um, I do like the way they did her face. It does look pretty cool. Um, I must admit the hair is probably the highlight of her head sculpt, which continues around he here with just a flurry of beautifulness. I love that. That looks really nice. Um, do like the hair. Um, this part here, okay. They have the uh, spawn painted on earrings there, which if you look at closer, you can't really appreciate that because it's the paint is just not the best. It just does not look very good on those earrings. Like the fact that they added it. Don't like the fact that they cut corners and kind of did a hack job on the paint. It's like an Earl Scheib on her, on her face there. So anyway, uh, moving down into the shoulder pads area, I do like the gold and the uh, silver paint apps on the shoulder pads, and I really like them on the, uh, the forearms there. That looks actually pretty cool. Um, I do dig that. That looked good, even around her bra area. Looks very nice and detailed and painted well. Um, there, not very much articulation here. Her head moves just slightly, but uh, her hair and these shoulder pads really restrict movement. Um, next thing on articulation, her arms do move 360 all the way around. Those shoulder pads do inhibit movement there. She has a single jointed 
elbow bend, no wrist articulation, no forearm articulation. So very basic on the articulation. Um, a little bit more so far than Series 1 figures, but uh, still very basic for Series 2 here. Um, same thing on the other side. She does have uh, open hands, uh, one for a sword most likely, and one for her spear on this side. Um, so far, I do like the paint apps in some spots, and then in other spots, it does lack a bit. So uh, be your own judge when you get this figure as to uh, how you think her apps on the paint it would be. Um, I'd like to go ahead and point out too that I did not like the fact that they painted on a knife and made it part of her mold on her leg. I hate that when they do that to figures. That's just sacrilegious. So anyway, um, you know, pretty good for the most part on the looks. From a distance, she looks amazing. But then when you try getting posing her, the articulation is not very good. Um, she has no waist articulation, no ab crunch, uh, all pretty basic stuff here. Um, her legs do come out to the side, which I don't really care for either. Um, they got that on a wide joint, I believe, so that um, it definitely uh, creates a weird pose when you move her legs up or down. She does move back as well. Um, her knees are a single jointed knee bend, um, and there's no articulation in the feet on either side. So again, very basic. I do like that they added this little belt sheath that continues around here that is loose and just kind of moves all around, but you can put her accessory in this, which I really dig. I think that was awesome. Uh, the detail on that is not too bad. Um, so there's some good attributes and there's uh, more bad than good actually on, on Angela. She is just so hard to keep standing and uh, it takes a lot to get her to stand up properly. So I'm just gonna hold her there so you can gaze upon Angela. Next, we'll go ahead and get her accessories on, take a look at her with those, and discuss those briefly. Guys, we are back with Angela, and I must say, um, she looks pretty cool with this gear on, but I'm gonna give you some specific information that's gonna make you change your mind very quickly. So first of all, well, let's take a look at her spear, which, uh, man, this thing was the biggest letdown of the century. See that little mark right there? For a first time on G1 Toys, a toy broke in my hand as I was trying to uh, manipulate it and fire this little spear out of here as well. So really had some uh, bad luck with this weapon uh, right out of the box. So um, durability wise, this thing is garbage. Um, you know, I barely put any pressure and this snapped right in two. I actually took a moment to super glue that as you see right there in the middle. Um, you know, even this lever right here, um, it still works and fires this but I'm not gonna demonstrate because it too broke after I shot it a few times. So completely flimsy. Um, you know, the details not really there here on this thing. Um, the end of it does come off um, just like that, which to me kind of makes no sense at all. So I'm not sure why they made, made it like that. That makes no sense why that comes off. It's just utter garbage. This thing does fly across the room for maybe, maybe six inches or so, not too, uh, thrilled by that either. So this is this is a piece, I hate it. Um, let's look at her sword a little closer. Her sword was better. Um, it has a little sheen to it there as you can see. I kinda like that. Um, she holds it wonderfully. She looks good holding it. And the fact that they put this little belt here that you can sheath the sword in is a really cool addition to the toy as well. Um, I found it very hard to get in there but I finally got it to go. That's how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to sit in there. It does look awesome. Um, I do like that um, aspect of the weapons. So that was a good way to uh, incorporate, uh, you know, extras with this figure and that sword. You know, if it wasn't for that, she'd be getting a horrible grade um, on her accessories and her durability especially. And even the figure itself, so hard to stand up, not made very well, cut in corners everywhere. So I'm really disappointed with how the figure turned out in this particular series of uh, toys. I'm sure the later series of Angela's became a lot uh, more intricate and well-made, but this one is not the best. Um, she does come with this paperwork as well. This kind of just shows everybody from series one and two, and then gives you a little story about everyone right there as well. So you get this fold out that's pretty big actually. Um, shows you the vehicles down there that you've already seen on the back of the box. So I'm not sure why they added this thing in with nothing on the back. Um, just a few stories on these guys. Kind of a waste of time. Kind of frustrated. So I'm just going to throw that over there. You know, let's get to her grading. I'm not saying it's the worst figure I've ever seen, but it's up there with some of the worst. So let's get into her grade now.
All right, guys, let's start with Angela's appearance first. You know, there was a few areas that I noticed that needed a little work um, around the uh, bikini line here was actually one of them, and I didn't point that out before, but um, just a little bit of uh, paint uh, problems right through here. Didn't look the best. Um, they could have done that a little bit better, I was thinking. Um, you know, there was a couple places where they might have missed a little bit of paint as well. Um, not a huge deal, but, uh, you know, little minor practicalities. It is definitely going to hurt her score for appearance. Um, you know, this is the panty version, which uh, I did forget to show you before. There's those panties they painted on. So, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Um, she doesn't look bad. I mean, honestly, from a distance, she doesn't look too bad. I did notice one more thing, too, that they had glued on this little flippy-do hairpiece here, which uh, I wish that was all one solid piece. So, you know, for looks, the paint apps, you know, of course, with the earrings as well, I noticed um, the paint apps aren't the greatest. So on that, I'm going to give her a six. And into articulation. Angela had some standard movements, but, you know, some of the movements were hindered by the extra armors and things that they'd put on her. So for articulation, I'm not too impressed. I'm going to go ahead and give her a four would have given her a five but just for the lack of movement in some areas which they could have done differently so that she could have moved a little bit farther would have been a little nicer with this figure so let's keep it at a four on articulation right on into durability now this is the worst figure i have ever opened thus far for durability um, she doesn't feel very strong her accessories are absolute garbage I'm going to give her a two in durability. That's the lowest score ever. And when we talk about collectability with Angela, she is a generation one, a series one figure of her kind. So I do like that fact. I do like the fact that I own this because Angela is a very cool character. I really dig the comic book character, Angela. So let's go ahead and give her a seven in collectability which will kind of increase her grade somewhat, but not quite enough. It's still one of the worst figures I've had so far. And for Angela's overall score, she gets 4.75. Wah, wah, wah. And that sums up our review of Angela from the Spawn Classic series. The lesson we learned today here is if heaven gives you grief, go rogue. Hey fans, if you like our reviews, subscribe to keep us alive and kicking. Also check us out on Instagram. Thanks so much for watching and never forget to channel your inner toy. Hunting spawn? No, no. I'm hunting rabbits, I swear. Oh my gosh, where is she? Oh, 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 oh. Ah! Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting rabbits.